Come with us for a day in Athens and learn how we almost got taken advantage of. How flipping our plans paid off in the coolest, most cheapest way we have ever gotten back to the ship. Getting off the ship was seamless. Gangway was down at 7.30 a.m., so we decided to set our alarm for around 7.30 a.m. and get off the ship about an hour later. That way, we're not there with the big rush of crowd all getting off the ship at the same time. All the board time wasn't until 6.30, so we had plenty of time. Plus, we did our research, and we knew we could take public transportation, such as a bus or taxi. We chose to take a taxi this time because as we exited the ship, we noticed that off to the right, there was an entire line of taxis and they were all having their papers reviewed by the local security or police or whatever it was to make sure they were valid and had authority to come to the port. So that gave an extra layer of security, which is always a good idea if you are in a port like that. If you do see that, it's probably pretty safe to take that particular taxi. And we also knew to pre-arrange our price and that it should cost between 15 and 20 euros. So I asked, how much should this cost? And he said, it's metered. So I'm like, okay, cool. It's metered and it's during rush hour. So we probably gonna make a little bit more money, but okay. How, how much, how much to a grapple is metered? Okay, meter's fine. And I instantly put it into my offline Google Maps because it's always a good idea to make sure that you aren't being taken purposefully out, out of the way for a longer route if it is metered especially because that will happen sometimes. He stuck exactly to the correct route. We had no issues. He was an excellent driver. You could tell he knew his way around the city uh, because of the way he was weaving in and out of traffic. Probably should have taken the motion sickness medicine before we got in the taxi cab, uh, but I'll remember to do that next time. And it was rush hour, so, you know, rush hour plus cruise ships coming into port, it was quite busy. But despite that, we did get there in roughly 30 minutes, maybe a little more. Yes, it, it was right about right at that 30 minute mark, which was a lot better than the over hour if we took public transportation. Now, when we're getting out of the cab is where I got thrown for a loop. And he tried to tell me that, hey, it's gonna be 10 euros more because we're dropping you off from the cruise port. I said metered, and then he tried to use his Google Translate, and I knew full well he understood what I was saying. I'm like, no, metered. We made a deal. How much to a grapple is metered? Okay. Metered's fine. And he's like, fine, 20, you know, so I gave him 20 euros, um, and we wanted to hurry to get out of the car. I really wanted to give him only 18 euros because the trip metered was a little less than 18 euros, and he was trying to pull a fast one on us. So. If it happens to you, know it should be 15 to 20 euros and expect what we just went through because it's probably gonna happen. Now, they said the cab would be 15 to 20 euros. It doesn't turn the meter on. I heard just give them 15 euros and be done with it, but. We'll see if we can just do flat rate. Yeah. And I will say that there was a lot of people doing drop off and things, and it was one of those, we should just get out of the car quickly and safely. So for me, it was, I'll waste the two euros to just give him the 20 euro and be out of the car. That way he can't do anything silly or whatever. So we just quickly got out of the car and it was no big deal. He left and we were done with it. All right, so now we are at Acropolis where everyone else is being dropped off and there's two different paths, one to the right, one to the left. If you didn't know, studies show that everyone goes to the right and we heard a travel guide say go to the left because it's a lot less crowded so that is what we did we proceed up to the left hand path and we arrived and we saw a long ticket line and this is where i feel like we were smart for our first time here and out of the research we did is we knew that there's supposed to be a little kiosk that you could buy your tickets at directly across from the ticket booth our two kiosks, we accepts Visa, it says it clearly, that you can buy your tickets to Acropolis. So we simply walked over there where there was literally no line. So there were actually a few options. If you just did a very, very basic, uh, I believe it was 20 euros, you could just do the Acropolis. But for 30 euros, you got like a pass to do seven sites. 
way worth it. I wasn't originally going to do the 30 euro one. I had full intentions of only doing the Acropolis. But once I figured out they were all like clumped together for the most part, I was like, well, why not? So we did the 30 euro package and it was a way worth it. And we'll go into more detail as to how and why later. So after we bought the tickets, we went to do some of the other sites before Acropolis because the earliest time that was available was 1 p.m. And it was about 10.15 when we bought the tickets. So what we noticed was, of course, we were there at, I think it was 10.30, roughly. So we bought the tickets at 10.15. We bought the tickets around 10.15. So the earliest we could have even gone in was would have been a 10.30 slot, roughly. Everything for the morning was already sold out. And later on that evening, we started looking around and noticed that basically all the morning slots were sold out for the next several days. So really, if you're super a planner, do it several weeks in advance if you really want to make sure you get that morning slot. But realistically, we'll go into how doing it backwards, so to speak, was better for us and what happened. So after we bought the tickets, we did some of the other sites before to Acropolis because the earliest time we could get in was 1 p.m. And we bought these tickets around 10.15, which was the same time as the people in line. However, when we actually got in line uh, about 12.30, we noticed a little sign that says, hey, you can get your tickets here. And it said hhticket.gr. And you can get the exact same ticket that we got for the same price. And later that evening, we tested how easy it was able to do. And you could get the same tickets. Now, however, if you were to look for the next day or two in advance, the earliest you could get was noon. However, if you go out like three or four weeks, you could get any time from 8 a.m. all the way until whatever time they close at later in the evening. Now, one thing you want to make sure you do if you book it far in advance is you want to make sure you get the right day. We did see someone that bought the incorrect day and there was nothing they could do about it. Tomorrow's ticket. You're good. Thank you. They bought tickets for tomorrow by accident. So because we couldn't get in till around one o'clock, we decided, okay, well, we'll, hit, we'll just go hit some of the other sites that we got entry into. But immediately off to the left um, from the entrance of the Acropolis was this really cool staircase that went up to this, I'll call it a scenic overlook, where you could see the Acropolis from down below and gorgeous city views that we didn't really know was an option or that was there, but it was really cool. It was very rough, I'll say like no railings, nothing like that, like you kind of have to climb over rocks. It was extremely slippery, but we got some really awesome pictures of the Acropolis in the background um, from that vista. If you're finding this helpful, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so YouTube knows to share this with others. So we followed the path off to the left and it was a very nice pathway that walked you and kind of meandered you down the hill. The pathway brought you to Ancient Agora and the Roman Agora, as well as Hadrian's Library. So three of the sites on the seven site pass were all clumped right there together. Very, very close to the Acropolis, very close to downtown. And in between the two Agoras was a small block of shops and restaurants. We stopped for a very good little snack, I'll call it, at a restaurant called The Veranda. And what do you think we got, being that we're in Greece? We got a gear on fries, of course, and some random drink uh, that was local, Mandarin something or another. The gear was 12 euros, the drink was nearly 5 euros, and then they asked for like a little tip at the end. So it was about 18 euros all in for lunch at the veranda. And one of the best benefits of eating at a restaurant is using the restroom while you're there. And the restrooms were extremely clean. The staff were very friendly. They had lots of nice outdoor seating. It was a nice cool breeze coming down the hill. Very nice place to kind of take a break. And the shops right around the corner from that particular restaurant were, I will say the least aggressive, or I don't know what the word is, but very nice shop owners. And we actually got our souvenirs from those shops um, before we went on down the pathway some more to go toward the plaza. So because these three sites are together in that 
literally they they're like right there together you don't have to go far you don't have to get a taxi you don't have to transport it's so easy you can walk it all so these three sites are going to be the roman agora hadrian's library and the ancient agora and we got lots of footage of all three as well as if you continue to follow the path it takes you to Plaka. If you want to see some raw footage of these areas, look in the description below for the link. If you continue down the path, you're brought to Plaka. Plaka is very well known for its shopping, souvenirs. It's everyone talks about go to Plaka, go to Plaka. Well, go to Plaka. And just past that is the Monastiraki Square, which is very busy. It's full of tourist shops, local shops, and tons of restaurants to get authentic Greek food. And it's the exact same place that we saw people from our ship on a tour right in that same area. They said, I'll be here, meet back here in an hour, and gave them an hour to shop that district. Yes, Plaka and that particular square is very well-known excursion stop as part of the package. And a lot of times they emphasize going to a particular restaurant for food. So we browsed a little bit here, but we did have to leave to make sure we had enough time to walk back up the path to the Acropolis on time for our time slot. But one of the most talked about restaurants you can see as you walk down this particular hill, it sticks out right, literally right in front of you. In our research, one of the most popular places was called the MS Garden Restaurant. It offers rooftop views of the city and the Acropolis in the background, and I've been told to do it at sunset. Of course, we did not quite have time to do that, and we, we knew we didn't have time to go, but it's definitely a for sure on the list for next time. They do also recommend making a reservation for this experience. Yeah, when all board time is 6.30, it's hard to do it at sunset when sunset is like close to 8. So we got our way back to Acropolis, and we wanted to do this a little bit early because when we left, the line was fairly long. So we wanted to get in there right on time or maybe a little bit early. So we got there at 12.30 uh, in the back of the line here, and it seemed pretty long, about the same distance as what it was when we left. So I thought it was going to be about 30 minutes. I reapplied sunscreen while we were waiting, and it ended up being a little less than 30 minutes, probably closer to 20 minutes. So it moved fairly quickly all in. Now, the paths here, some of them are decent. A lot of them are not decent, and they are very slippery. In fact, I saw someone fall. Yes, and that person was me. Thankfully, I somewhat caught myself did hurt my hand mostly just scared everyone around us but I really was okay and I was actually being extremely careful so don't make the mistake of wearing like cutesy sandals or like skater shoes where the bottoms are just slick with absolutely no grip wear like a proper tennis shoe I do mean a proper tennis shoe even in places where you're like oh this doesn't look slippery gazillions of people are walking on this thing every single day it's very slippery Believe me. <laughs> In one of the first places that you pass, um, which happened right before she slipped, was a amphitheater. So there were two different type of amphitheaters, I'll call them, or theaters that were very cool. And one of them was actually still being used. And then they were actually setting up for a show that evening. So it was really cool to see them milling around, setting up equipment and things like that. But as you're walking, there's a couple of different routes you could take. You can go directly to the Acropolis, or there is a south slope and a north slope. And I believe the south slope then is to your right? Yes, the south slope is to the right and kind of wraps you around the side. But it does give some really cool views. And then it just kind of winds you back up to the main pathway to go to the Acropolis. And the theme of our trip over and over for the best Instagramable pictures is to take them a little bit later, not right away. So as you get further along the amphitheater and move on as well as the other sites, you get a better picture, less people. So if you have Instagram, this would be a good place to take a picture. If I had Instagram, I would definitely be posting. 
We are on assignment here at Giovanni's on Odyssey of the Seas, filming, and some people play games. This was a quiet location. <laughs> Not so much now. One thing that we did kind of quit a little early was if we continue to follow the path, there was another site, which was the theater of, probably going to say it wrong, Dion, Dionysus, Dionysus. <laughs> And it had some surrounding ruins, but from the top of the Acropolis, you do kind of get to see it down below, and which I feel like would have been a better shot anyway, so I don't feel too bad about it. Then we made our way up to the main Acropolis summit, which, yes, you're hot and tired, but let me tell you, it was worth every slip and sweat and heat and all of it. And same advice, don't stop to take pictures necessarily on your way in. You get better pictures on the way out. Everyone tended to like stop right there thinking, I'm not going to get this picture again. It's better on the exit. <laughs> so just be mindful of that. Yes. And as you crest the top, I didn't realize about all these other buildings. Wow. Is all I have to say. It was so breathtaking and like meaningful for me. I actually did cry a little bit. Don't judge me. But there are three main sites to see from the very top, and it gives you full 360-degree views of Greece below. It was absolutely worth it. I would do it again. I probably would have stayed up there longer, but we were really hot and tired at this point. Yeah, it was only about uh, low 70s uh, degrees Fahrenheit, and there was some water that you could buy as well for 50 cents. Not really 50 cents, but half a euro uh it only accepts change so bring that the water is not cold but if you use my strategy and have the best bottle in the world my ice shaker also known as big blue fill it up with the ice before you leave the ship it's going to be cold still when you get there you have lots of ice left and then you can simply pour bottled water back on bring lots of water uh, i'll leave a link in the description for my favorite bottle ice shaker.com so once we were done getting all the pictures that we wanted, and there, like we said, there are plenty of places to take pictures. Don't get consumed with the one spot. There are plenty of places. We made our way um, down the pathway, and we took about a 16-minute walk, again, through the offline maps to get to the Olympian. This was slightly underwhelming. I, you could see everything from the fence, so if you kind of just like, oh, hey, there it is, and took pictures over the fence, it has the same effect. Pictures inside were better, of course, because you're closer. But I'm glad it was included in the 30 euro price point. It was one of the seven stops, but I would definitely would not have paid the money to get in because it was underwhelming. But it was definitely a neat to say, I've seen it, I've been there type of thing. If you want to see raw footage of the Acropolis, please look in the description below for the link of raw footage just so you can get the full walking tour because we spent about an hour up there. After we got done walking our marathon, okay, maybe it wasn't a marathon, but it was a lot of steps, okay? We were going to head back. We were going to grab a taxi, and my wife had this genius idea that I am so proud that she came up with. <laughs> so as you cross the street, you're in like a busy city setting, which let me point out was one of the unexpected things is that surrounding all of these sites, it's just a big bustling city. So you just kind of turn around from one of the sites and there's someone going to work. It was a little weird, but anyway, there's taxis and buses and everything like just like one street over. So I see all these tour buses and I'm thinking, well, they're probably all going back to the ship. And I see the little Royal Caribbean tour excursion stickers on everybody's shirts. So I'm like, well, what's, what are the odds that we just ask for a ride and that he lets us do it? So we just asked the bus driver, could we get a ride back to port? He said, sure, for one and 90 euros, get on the bus and pay me at the end. We we're like, okay. So <laughs> we took the extra two seats. We got on the bus and they counted us for a head and they had some extras, but they knew. And so that money just goes directly into the bus driver's pockets. And we were very happy to pay basically four euros for a ride back. It beats the 15 or $20 taxi. Yes, we could have done bus and public transportation. I even taken the cable car that runs right by, but we didn't have to figure any of that out. So 
it was no stress taking the taxi. So because we had sort of, I'll say, gotten by maybe is the way or gotten super, super lucky, super smart and did that, we had an idea. So when we got back on board that evening, we did ask the question at the next cruise or the excursion desk, I'm sorry, of, hey, does anyone offer a shuttle service or is there a way for us to kind of do the same thing? We were kind of told no, and there wasn't really a shuttle for this particular location, but we were told that sometimes they do offer a shuttle service. So when you're in a destination, you're like, I don't want to do an excursion. Go ahead and just ask that question of does Royal offer a shuttle service from port to a certain destination and back? And obviously doing it on your own and figuring out public transportation or even a taxi, you're going to save a lot of money. And let's break down how much we spent in port all day. So 20 euros for our taxi on the way there, uh, 60 euros for our tickets to the Acropolis and the other sites, 18 euros for lunch. Uh, we bought uh, 24 euros worth of souvenirs, including two coasters, a canvas bags, and a Christmas ornament. And in the terminal area, we bought some olive oil gifts, uh, two of them. That was 29 euros. The other cool thing about this is it was 100 milliliters, which is 3.38 ounces, just under the 3.4 ounces that TSA allows you to fly with. So no checked bag, saving money there as well. The bus ride back, ugh, budget bus ride, four euros. And uh, we spent a total of two euros for water um, there on top of Acropolis. And again, right as you exit there, there also had another vending machine at uh, 50 cent euro things for water. So total, we spent 157 euros all day in Athens, Greece. For comparison, the Acropolis sightseeing with the new Acropolis Museum and Plaka free time, aka the shopping, was 278 euros for two people through the cruise line. That excursion is nearly seven hours long while we left the ship at 9.30 a.m. and was back on board by 3.30 p.m. Not only were we able to spend 130 euros less, but we were also able to get gifts. So for a better comparison, it would be for the transportation cost and the museum cost only, which was only 84 euros. So almost 200 euros less by doing it on our own with a taxi than going through the cruise line. And some of the feedback that we have heard from other travelers just, you know, as you make conversation on the ship are that, you know, you do feel very rushed at some of these sites because you have to keep a certain time frame. And I understand that and I totally understand that because they have a schedule. They have to get you from one site to the next site, etc. So you do kind of have to hurry. It's like, oh, take a picture. Now go. We didn't have that. We literally got to take as much time as we wanted. Now click and tap your screen here and learn how not to get scammed or get lost in a city that you don't know. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. This is Brian and Mrs. Tips for Cruisers. We'll see you over in the next video.